All right, so for the vocabulary, I know it was really hard. Some of you even asked me about drawing pictures for the assignment, and then I was fine with just the verbal definition, but it, sometimes it's really helpful to have an image in mind. So you might wanna jot some things down. The first set that I have here aren't you know, riveting things. The theorem is a true statement <clears throat> that can be proven, which is different than a postulate. A postulate um, has already been proven. So you can assume that, 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 that a postulate is a fact. All right, parallel lines, they never intersect, okay? Parallel lines. The notation for a parallel line looks like an 11. Oh, my pen's not writing. So if you see that in the book, that just means it's parallel, okay? And then they usually have like little triangles on them going the same direction, stating that those two lines are parallel. Skew lines are not parallel or perpendicular, so they never intersect. If you think about this cube here, this green line is skew to the red line. Um, tonight in your homework, number 36 is gonna ask you for some examples of different uh, line relationships. And, and it'll say about like in the classroom, but for the sake of the homework, we're not in the classroom, use anywhere, wherever you are, in your, if you're in your bedroom or your living room, wherever, just find an example of two skew lines. Uh, parallel planes are planes that do not intersect. And perpendicular lines, the most important thing about perpendicular lines is where they intersect, they make a right angle. See this little box here? So EA is perpendicular to AB because it makes this right angle. Um, we would use the slope formula later on to determine if lines are perpendicular because they're reciprocal opposite slope. <clears throat> but this right now is what is really important. Um, a transversal, this line right here that cuts these two coplanar lines, that is called the transversal. Then when we are talking about angle relationships here, so I'm just gonna do a quick sketch and this might be what you wanna draw in your book. Like here are my lines. Here's my transversal that cuts both of those lines. Corresponding angles occupy corresponding positions. What that means is like here in my picture, angle one and angle five are corresponding angles. They're on the same side of the transversal and they skip an angle. So if I was corresponding, I could be here and here. Those are corresponding angles, okay? They skip an angle. Also on the other side, like two and six are corresponding. Four and eight are corresponding. So it's important that you understand that. There is a cool little diagram in your book on page um, 141. It's a good resource for when you're doing your assignment this evening or this afternoon, however. Alternate exterior angles are basically what the name says. They alternate over the transversal and they're on the outside of my two lines. So if I drew a quick sketch, my fancy lines, there's my transversal. Alternate exterior angles would be like here and there. They alternate on either side of the transversal outside of those two lines. So two and seven in my picture and one and eight. They are alternate exterior. Same with alternate interior. Now they alternate over the transversal, but they're in between those two lines. So if I drew a fancy quick sketch here. I don't know why that was so long. Um, here is one angle. It is alternate interior with this, this angle in between the two lines. So three and six or four and five, they're called alternate interior. They alternate over the transversal in between the two lines. And then the last one is consecutive interior angles. They are one after the next in between those two lines. So four and six or three and five. They are consecutive interior. We will talk more about that on Friday. But for a quick sketch, if you want to put this in your little notebook or have this as a resource, or you can use the picture in the book on page 141, like I said. Um, <clears throat> Consecutive interiors are right next to each other. They're one after the next angle. So those two angles are consecutive interior. 
All right, now let us get us to the notes. So today we are talking about section 3.1, identify pairs of lines and angles. I don't know where the angles come from. I guess in the second slide, we'll see an angle. But here is a parallel postulate. So if there is a line, here's my line L, and a point not on the line, here's my point not on the line, there is exactly one line through the point that is parallel to the given line. So I'm gonna do my best to try to draw a straight line. I'm in a heck of a time today. Hey, that's not too bad, okay? So there is only one line through this point that's gonna be parallel to this line. I can't draw another line here that's parallel. Right, and then to show it's parallel, we'll just put our little triangles on there. Boom, done. All right, that's easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? So you'll have a question in your homework tonight. It'll be like, how many lines through the point are parallel to the given line? The answer is one. There's only one I can draw. Are we okay if I go to the next slide? Okay, so this is going to be the perpendicular postulate, okay? So again, if we have a line here and a point not on the line, there is exactly one line through the point that is perpendicular to the given line. So here I will try again to draw a straight line. Ooh, that was close. And lines have arrows on both ends, just so you know. Okay, so remember when they're per perpendicular to each other, they make a right angle where they intersect. Sorry, my little box. Oh my gosh, long here. Okay, so that's all that's basically saying. Again, you'll have a question about that. It's kind of common sense. Like, I couldn't draw more than one perpendicular line to my given line through the point, only one. Okay, any questions about that? It was like easy peasy lemon squeezy. I told you this is by far the simplest notes we will take all semester. So just the parallel and perpendicular postulate. I wanted to make sure I reviewed the vocabulary because that is super important to answer the questions for your homework this evening, which is this. This is assignment number 10. Okay. I cannot stress enough how important definitions are that we understand some of the vocabulary in geometry. All right, so make sure you copy this down. And then this will be due tomorrow at 8 a.m. Um, those of you, don't forget, you are taking that chapter one test tomorrow, the first half of the alphabet. So make sure you're studying tonight as well. All right, did everyone get this copied down? All right, I like it in the head nod. Good, good, 